Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about database buffer cache. So, this is the Oracle abstract picture of Oracle server, and then uh, which is consist of a instance and and database files, and then instance consist of a memory structure and database processes. And we have already explained you about the files, and then in this set of videos, we are going to we are discussing about the memory structure, and in this particular video, we are going to discuss about database buffer cache. So, what is database buffer cache, and why we need buffer cache, and then what are the algorithms that is there to manage the database buffer cache? Uh, that's what we are going to learn in this set of videos. Okay, so. Let's try to uh, visualize something. Uh, we have a database which is like consists of different uh, DBA files and all. And as you as you learn that uh, you know a you know the data is stored inside a database block, which is called DB block. And there are multiple DB blocks. And then this DB block is uh, the size of the DB block is um, given in the init dot or a parameter by DB underscore block size. So let's say I created my database with database block size with 8 kilobyte. That means all this block inside here is 8 kilobyte and then I have data inside those blocks. Like you now whenever we are doing an insert into employee, the exact data, those things is going to store here in this database block. All right. So there's plenty of those database blocks and then we discuss about extent, segments and table space and so on. So on. All right. So whenever we are going to do a select star from EMP the employees data is going to be you know what is going to what are, what are stored in the database block in the file those things are going to come to the random access memory and then store here okay so let's say this is an uh, you know so this is your disk and this is your random access memory and then in, inside random random access memory there is a, a area called uh, SGA and inside that SGA there is an area called DB buffer cache. So what is going to happen? This block is going to come and then store in this area called DB buffer cache. So essentially DB buffer cache is a memory memory structure inside the system global area which stores the database block from the database. So when you do the select star from EMP assuming that EMP has 14, 14 to 15 rows and the actual data size is less than 8 kilobyte. So in that case if all the employees data is stored in one block. So when I do select star from EMP Oracle's dedicated server process is going to copy this thing to the memory okay? and then this is in the memory right now. So let's say uh, after some time what I'm going to give I'm going to give select star from department similarly what is going to happen it will going to check like you know, if department's information is there already in the buffer cache or not if it's not there then it's going to go and then going to read from the department block so which is for example let's say this is department block and then it's going to put this department department block in the db buffer cache and it will continue let's say after some time i'm going to give select star from emp so whenever I'm going to give select star from EMP, in that case, the dedicated server is going to look at the DB buffer cache, and it indeed find up in, in it indeed finds out that there is the employee data is already available in buffer cache. So in that case, it is going to give you the answer right away by reading the buffer cache uh, area. Okay, so this is called a cache hit. That means we are getting the data from the buffer cache. We do not have to go in in the in the second in the third uh, scenario. We do not have to go to the to the to the file system to get the data. So it is always in you know like you know since cache hit is getting from the random access memory. Therefore, everything you know which has a cache hit is going to be faster. Right. So if it's going to faster, then is not it a good idea that any time you know then after that is just somebody is going to give select star from t select star from t maybe it is not there but it will like you know we, for the first time we can read from the file and then have t here right 
as a table this a data block and then and so on and all these things right for the consequent let's say like in the step 7 I'm going to do select start from T in that case I'm going to get that data from the buffer cache so therefore a cache set so that means after a warm up time we are probably going to get everything from the buffer cache provided the size of the buffer cache is same as size of the database okay so that means we can so cache hit is 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 always good and then to get a cache hit to ensure that we are going to get a cache hit we need to make sure that the buffer cache size of the buffer cache should be equal to size of the database so, so let's take a look in case of the size of the database like you know a, a very ordinary database might have gone to 100 GB okay the size of 100 GB that means I need in my random access memory or my RAM I need to have a space for 100 GB and as you know this may not be possible so that means the you know because this is very expensive memory the random access memory is more expensive than the disk so here's a ballpark figure for example a 1 GB uh, RAM may cost you around 30 US dollar whereas a 1 terabyte um, hard drive might cost you about 100 dollar okay so therefore you can see the difference you know so therefore it is it is it is not possible to have a size of your buffer cache which to be equal to the size of the database if that is the case then what is going to happen like you know if I'm going to do select start from T then select start from T1 then so block buffer so eventually like after doing couple of queries it might possible that I'm going to fill this database buffer cache completely so if I'm going to fill this database cache completely, uh, let's say at the at the step eight, I, uh, after I do some more queries, I'm going to fill this buffer cache. So in step nine, I'm going to do say select star from P, and assume that this this table has never been accessed before. So that means you will not get the data for P in the buffer cache. That means you have to go to the disk and read it to the buffer cache. But if you look, like you know, we do not have any more space. So that means some of the sum of these blocks is going to be rewritten, right? That means I'm going to remove you know whatever I have probably you know whatever I'm done in the first I, I would have uh, re rewrite with the data block from select start from TP. So if that is the case, then Oracle needs to intelligently see which ones to be removed from the uh, buffer block buffer cache and which ones should be kept. Right, so that means there should be a there should be a way to keep blocks in buffer cache and release from buffer cache. So that is what that is how the comes to the management of uh, buffer cache. So the management buffer cache happens like this. Say for example, this is our DB bu block buffer, and then for simplicity, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to divide this, you know, this cache. So this is our DB buffer cache, and I'm going to divide this DB buffer cache into say multiple blocks, right? Let's say for for simplicity, I have 16 blocks. Okay, so 16 blocks is there, right? And let's say name it. So this is this is one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Okay, so so this is what uh, you know. So the database is just started, and I do not do anything. So therefore, this block buffer, you know, buffer cache, no, nothing is there. Then let's say I do select star from EMP. So select start from EMP brings a block and then keeps it in this one. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to maintain a list. Let's say this is a list. And the list, there are two end. This is a top and this is bottom. So what I'm going to maintain in this list, the address of this area. Okay. So since I have occupied one, so therefore I'll say that okay, so one is in the topmost. Then let's say I uh, do select star from department. Select star from department. So in that case, 
I'm I'm going to basically you know read from the database file and get the department block and put it to this place right so since this is happened after one so therefore what's going to happen two is going to come here and one is going to go down okay so two is two is in the in the top one one is so whatever the last time I'm accessing those things will go up right so let's say what I'm going to do I'm going to do in, in step 3 I'm going to select star from T another table so in that case I'm going to use 3 now so if I'm going to use 3 then this list is going to become like this so this list is going to be become first 3 then 2 and then 1 is go down let's say after you know after step 4 I'm going to use select star from EMP that means the first thing if I do select star from EMP that means it is going to read from this block right so that means one is again reused or retouched so therefore one is going to come to the top so in that case my list is going to look like one here then three then two okay so this is my new list one three and two so so on and then finally like you know whenever I'm going to you know uh, read to all these 15 16 uh, you know blocks so then all you know the list is going to have 16 entry so the 16 entry the top entries are going to show me what is the last used okay whereas the bottom is going to what are the least used okay so this is otherwise top end or it's called MRU that is most recently used and this end is called LRU or least recently used and this list is called popularly as LRU list and this algorithm is called LRU algorithm so this is how database buffer was managed before Oracle 8i okay so before Oracle 8i what is going to happen is that we are going to put this thing and let's say like you know after we complete you know after we fill all 16 and then say after that we're giving another query and that query requires some some blocks but looks like all blocks are being occupied let's say during that time whenever this thing happened let's say um, like you know um, database block number 5 is in the bottom and I need one block so in that case what I'm going to do I'm going to rewrite 5 okay so 5 was written something back and then I'm going to rewrite on 5 and then I'm going to rewrite whatever I'm going to get from this query select star from P so P's data is going to be rewritten on top of whatever was existing before so this is how with a small amount of buffer cache I can manage who are my popular data popular data blocks and I can always by using this kind of algorithm I can keep those popular um, data blocks so the goal here is to keep what are the popular blocks and then release what are not, not popular blocks let's say if the select star from EMP is always being queried by multiple users that means select star from EMP if we keep the data blocks of EMP in the buffer cache then our query is going to faster because it's it can read directly from the database buffer cache so that is that is the that is the idea behind um, the LRU list but here is a big problem the problem is that say for example like you know so I have all this thing you know you know happening you know I'm getting from employee from department from T from P assume that I have a table called a that table is itself say a huge table of one gigabyte that means the total number of data blocks let's say that is 50 so if the total number of database blocks are 50 if I do query select star from A that means I need 50 blocks in the buffer cache how many blocks I have I have 16 blocks so therefore what is going to happen that I'm going to write all these 16 blocks with the data from the table A and then the, the remaining not 34 you know it can stay in the database so that means I can partially fill the buffer cache so if that is the case that means let's say like you know all these queries or whatever was, was there those data is all gone what you are seeing right now in the buffer cache the data of table A let's say to make this case more bad that this is just one time you know after this nobody really really call anything select star from A so that means what I am seeing right now, I am seeing that unnecessarily my buffer cache is flooded with the data from table A 
whereas other tab other you know data blocks are suffering and let's say after this in, in somebody is going to do a select star from emp so in that case because you know since my uh, database block block buffer is flooded with a i have to again go to the db and then get the employee information and then going to store somewhere okay so so uh, re rewrite basically rewrite uh, somewhere so let's say i'm going to rewrite here so the problem is that like you know because of a one bad one full table scan which is a one full table scan of a big table it may happen that my LRU algorithm is going to fail you know so in that case what they come up with they come up with a algorithm called modified LRU algorithm in the modified LRU algorithm if you do a full table scan of a big table then instead of you know flooding this thing they want to you know Oracle will take limited amount of data from the database and keep those things in the LRU end not in the MRU end in the LRU end of the list okay so that means I do still have you know all this other other database block whatever I'm, I'm doing from employee from department will be present so that is called modified LRU list but modified LRU algorithm is not also going to work when we do a index scan range in case of index scan range if your leaf nodes are going to have multiple blocks then it may happen that it will flood the buffer cache again so don't worry if you do not understand about index scan so but what I'm saying is that modified LRU is going to fail in certain cases and still that flooding of flooding of buffer cache can happen if flooding of buffer cache happen then again a lot of other other uh, data uh, uh, will not be available that means a lot of other users are going to have a bad response time or they will suffer so after that what oracles comes up they comes up with a new algorithm called touch count so what they did that in the LRU list whatever we had before they divide this LRU list into two parts the top part is called hot list and the bottom part is called cold list so the top part is called hot list and bottom part is cold list and now let's say assume that you know we have a you know you know this is our block buffer and then we have we have we are reading this thing and now let's say like you know we have already some you know some something is already filled and all this thing right so from the database so whenever we are doing let's say we are giving a query at select star from t when you do select star from t whatever data is going to come those data is going to be stored here in the block buffer but instead of you know you know whatever you store like let's say it's, it's stored here right and this address we will going to insert this address in the middle of the list okay so this is your LRU list so put that thing in the middle of the list right so instead of putting you know, basically in the LRU list the problem was we are always keeping that one in the most recently used then what we are going to do we are going to keep that one in the middle of the list and also we are going to have another variable called a counter so we give that counter to one that means select star from t is the first time it is it comes so therefore the counter is one let's say after some time somebody is going to do again select star from t if they do again select star from t that means again this you know this will be touched right basically you know the server the dedicated server is going to read from uh, this uh, this block and then the counter will become two and then what happens that block is going to move so that that address that means this address so let's say this address is 7 so this 7 address is going to move to the top and then and then so on like you know if this is really used a lot popular then it's going to be in the top okay and then what are the least popular so they're going to go drop by and then they're going to come to the bottom and then eventually they are going to aged out aged out means something else is going to be written on those uh, blocks okay so you know if you do this so then we could able to solve the problem of the LRU list because we will not going to flood anymore the buffer cache so another thing that always happen like you know whenever we are going to uh, you know do this thing so when, when, whenever we are, we are going to do this thing it may happen that several oracle process like you know whenever doing the select star from t it may happen that several oracle process may be trying to uh, to touch this uh, this um, 
you know buffer cache so in that case unnecessarily the counter number is going to increase to prevent that oracle introduced a you know a, a hidden parameter that is called db underscore aging underscore touch time and by default so this underscore parameter so by default this parameter is set to three second that means if we are going to touch within three second multiple times this will be counted just as once so let's say this is your timeline zero three so let's say you know within this first three second lot of different processes are touching this in uh, you know, a buffer for 50 times but what is the counter the counter value is still one but after three seconds if somebody is doing something then it's the counter value is going to increase to two so again after six seconds the counter value is going to increase to you know if, if somebody touch this block then going to increase to three and so on so that is how this is going to go up the list so this is what is a touch count and then uh, how this helps so another way that we can think about that you know in the so we have this called block buffer and this block buffer is going to be managed by LRU plus touch count or just only touch count algorithm all right however there are some data we want to keep forever okay and what they do they have another pool which is called keep pool again the similarities of block buffer and clip pool is that all of them stores the user data or data blocks but keep pool is going to store the data for longer time than the LRU list we for example in in the real life this thing we we have something called lookup table so lookup table is something that we always wants to you know check so put the lookup tables data on the keep pool that will make sure that this thing is going to stay more time have you been stored those things in the block buffer then there is no guarantee that lookup table will be will be kept in the in the hot part of your uh, list or the hot part of your LRU list okay then we have another thing called recycle pool so which is just opposite of recycle pool which is just opposite of keep pool whatever you're going to put here is immediately going to be rewritten okay so keep pool we are going to keep for more time recycle pool we are going to keep for zero time just use and then uh, remove and in the block buffer it's in between so it's going to going to be uh, for more time so one more thing that I want to discuss like as you, as you discussed that we have a in a database we have a block size and that block is basically copied to your block buffer or memory this is your RAM and this is your disk so starting from Oracle 9i onwards or release to onwards you can have multiple sizes of database block buffer so, so multiple sizes of the DB block size so if you remember that we discussed a parameter called DB underscore block size so they determ this determines how much is the size of the block okay so that you need to st you need to create during the database creation time so what Oracle 9i onwards uh, you know the feature is that you can create multiple DB block sizes so if you create multiple DB block sizes then also you have a multiple buffer pool so what we have discussed here is just the default buffer size but what we can have we can have another buffer size that is called db 16k let's say this is your it is a 8k block by default so that's a default and then we have a 16k which is uh, another block size then i will have another memory which is exactly similar to your db buffer cache but the the block the individual memory inside that will be at would be 16k and the the area name is called db 16k buffer size Okay. So this is this is how database buffer is managed and this is the most important tuning parameter that you need to understand to make sure that your database runs in a performing way.